Hello and welcome to JD Stone Creations. My name is Johnny and this particular video isn't actually about anything that's over there. It's actually to do with how to make your keyboard look awesome. Or rather, how I made my keyboard look awesome. So, without further ado, I'm going to tell my budgies to shut up. Thank you for watching, please subscribe and as always, stay creative. So, this was actually the earliest picture or video that I took of it, which was by the time that I'd already covered it in contact adhesive, ready to put the wood veneer on. And that's the contact adhesive that I used, it's actually quite good stuff, although this stuff had gone off, so it probably wasn't the best. And here's the nice fast motion thing of me putting the veneer on. You've got to be very, very careful not to get any air bubbles trapped in this, so don't just slap a veneer onto the surface of it. Uh, otherwise you'll get lots of little lumps and stuff trapped and to be honest even me doing this quite carefully this is about four times sped up I was being as careful as I possibly could there were still some air bubbles trapped in they're quite easy to get rid of you just use pinpricks and uh, get stuff out here's the method that I used which was actually using an ink roller which worked eh, quite well and then here was where I found out Oh, uh, I can't actually open it properly because I need to cut the corners of the veneer off. So, the next thing that came... Oh jeez, stop it. The next thing that came was I had to scalpel out all of the little edges and all of the little corners and eventually all of the control panels as well. So I started off going rather annoyingly against the grain. That's one of the key points about cutting wood veneer is you have to remember it is wood still it will split along the grain, so as you are doing it, be very, very conscious of that, doing it as carefully as you possibly can. Uh, here's the centre section, which luckily on all of these parts, apart from the button holes, the two biggest holes that technically you could make the biggest mistakes on, were covered with plastic surround thingamajigs. The next thing to do was allow the LEDs to shine through, because currently I've stuck a big veneer on the front of it. So. In order to do that, I took my handy LED torch, magnetised it to the base, closed the thing on top, and all of a sudden, I know exactly where the LEDs need to shine through. And there it is. Just use a scalpel and cut it out. Now, as you can see, some of these edges are a little bit rough, as I'm wagging my finger at it. So I took a quite a fine wood file and took away the glue bits, and all of a sudden, you're left with quite a nice edge. So the next stage was preparing for the red dye that I was going to put in it. And after doing, I think it was 400 grit and then 2000 grit sandpaper to make it as nice and smooth as is possible, crucially going with the grain, you use this painting prep stuff. It, essentially it's just a silicon cleaner. Uh, and this degreaser is absolutely fantastic. It's actually mainly used for paint prep on, say, cars, but it worked absolutely brilliantly getting all of the sawdust out of the grain, enabling me to add the Hydrocoat water-based wood dye. Must be said, this was probably the scariest part of the whole thing, because it looks really pretty as it is there, so I was crossing my fingers as to whether this even was, was even going to work. Um, what I would actually recommend is not putting as much dye on as I did to start with. See, you can see I'm kind of soaking it into one section there, and then as I'm going over, it's... Yeah, I would advise if you're watching this and thinking, oh, I can do that, put less wood dye on on the first coat, because some of it did start to bubble up a little bit. It must be said, most of that was because I used pretty crap contact adhesive, but... It still stands, had I put less of the red wood dye on to start with, it probably wouldn't have bubbled up. Oh, and this is one of the cool things that I used. Using a tiny little needle in order to get right into the gaps around the little LEDs that stick out. 
and the rest of it was pretty much plain sailing. I mean, I went with the grain for the majority of it and just made sure that you take your time and do it as smoothly as you possibly can. And there's the finish to start with. That was just after one coat and it's a lot more even than I thought it would be and there's some other instruments. Ah, yes, of course, I uh, did the dyeing on that as well, on the side blade. Now, the next bit um, is actually part of the project which I pretty much scrapped, but I've left it in the video because it's something that if you don't want to do what I ended up doing, this is a perfect alternative. It's absolutely fine. It's very easy to do. No, it isn't. I lie. It's not very easy to do, but it's still a method that you can do, well, very, very cheaply. Uh, so the masking tape that I'm actually using there is basically for pinstriping and this is a little kit that I got off eBay for a fiver and it enables you to do ink stamps of any words you want. You basically put individual letters into the stamp and then press it on and as you can see you can only see half of the letters so it didn't work particularly well the first time However, with a bit of practice and saturating the stamp in ink, it did actually come out quite well. So, it is the perfect alternative if you don't have what I do in the end. So, you, you stick around, you'll see. Uh, and then each time I went down, I removed a bit of masking tape, and that's basically as it looked in the end. It's, I don't know, it's, it's not bad. It did the job. Uh, and then it was time for reassembling the entire keyboard, which was a novelty because there's a lot of screws but actually it must be said for such a massive keyboard it wasn't quite as unwieldy as I thought and most of the electronics were quite easy to just fit in there was nothing battled it just took quite a long time uh, it must be said when you do disassemble one of these make sure you mark all of the cables because I did have to kind of look online to see which way they went I think eventually I just guessed, but either way, it worked and I was happy with the result. And there we are. The next stage, when the keyboard was already looking pretty good, was to put an edging strip on the front because it's a little bit rough around the edges, so this is basically just something to cover up. God damn it, budgies! To cover up the rough edge on the vinyl. Not the vinyl, the veneer, yes. Uh, unfortunately, there was an extra little bit that, um, yeah, I thought I cut it to fit, but nope. <laughs> uh, so, it was the turn of my lovely little metal file and a clampy thing, and just basically keep filing until it's nearly there, nearly there, nearly there, and then eventually it will snugly fit in. And then eventually you can glue it into place. But this was as it was, unpolished, and well, as the rest of it was nearly finished but just looking a little bit rough. So, the next thing to do was to take some sandpaper. I think I used 2000 grit on this bit. Or it might have been 1000, I'm not sure. You can work your way from about 400 up to 2000 if you really, really want. Get it as shiny as possible and get that cool brushed aluminium look. So the next step was to glue it in place. I think I used quick drying epoxy resin on this bit and well it seemed to work out quite well. Unfortunately you have to wait <laughs> just a few minutes and then after putting coats of glue on both sides you place the aluminium in place and give it a good solid shove and then you're done and then you've got to do it with the other bit that's a meter and a half long so yeah that um yeah i didn't glue it that quick that's sped up like four times <laughs> i wonder if you would have actually thought i'd glued that quick had i not told you still you put the glue on the oh jeez you put the glue on the aluminium and you put the glue on the thingamajig, the keyboard, and just glue it together. Although, make sure you wait. With contact adhesive, you have to wait at least five minutes for it to go tacky. 
if you put the glues together when they're still completely wet, it'll never dry properly, it'll never adhere properly. So make sure you wait the time that it says on the instructions, otherwise your piece of aluminium will just fall off. Or whatever you're gluing, it might not even be aluminium, it might be wood. I used wood on the back of it, so you'll see that in the rest of the video at some point. Unless I didn't include that, I can't even remember. Oh no, here it is. <laughs> So then he came to sanding the edging strip that went on the back, which, it must be said, was quite easy to do. And then, uh, there it is, died, because, well, you saw me dying the other bit, so you don't need to see me die this bit. Exactly the same process. And the way that I used to actually stick it onto the back was to lean the entire 30 kilogram keyboard on it, which it must be said actually worked quite well. So the next step was to clear coat, because I didn't really fancy it going all tarnished and mucky in the future, so it was a case of using this clear coat just to keep the shine. It is actually fantastic stuff. I'm, I, I'm not going to lie, I have no idea where it came from. I think it came from my granddad's workshop. Uh, unfortunately, I can't ask him, because uh, he's not here anymore. But thank you, granddad, for allowing me to use this stuff, because it is bloody fantastic. Oh, jeez. Oh, pits. And the next stage was to put that cool red felt stuff on that you see pianos having. Now, I don't actually have any of that correct red felt, but I do have some that makes a perfect substitute. I've put it on both of my side blades in various different guises, but none I managed to get quite this neat. And this is how I did it. First you take the felt stuff, and I did it double the thickness, or double the width that I actually need to cover the uh, keys, to make it stick out, there we go. Uh, plus, if you fold it in half, you get a much nicer edge. There you go, now it's folded in half. You, that front edge that you can see there is the edge that will be sticking out. Uh, now, rather than trying to line it up on the edge and not really know exactly how much it needs to stick out, the way that I did this, I thought was actually quite clever. You place it on the keybed exactly where you need it to go, put double-sided tape, which is proper Bostic double-sided tape, it's mega sticky, onto the keyboard, and then lower it down, which is actually a unique thing to the Fatar keyboards, hinge it down like that, and then, after giving it a quick press down, hey presto! I, it must be said that it's one of the biggest differences with this. Had I not even bothered to do the red veneer, this bit would have set it off and made it look awesome anyway. Heck, I think it looks actually better than most pianos do with that red felt stuff. Now, as I said earlier, I wasn't particularly happy with the uh, key labels. So, I ended up making this, and this took longer than the rest of the keyboard in modifications that I did. It's an aluminium piece, I think it's two millimeters thick, that I then decided, I know, I'm going to buy some um, metal stamps. And they looked even worse. So I ended up using this tiny little Dremel thing, which doesn't work fast enough to do any proper drilling or anything, but it's perfect as a little scribey thing. And obviously I wasn't going to show you every single movement I make on this, and I do accept that I'm probably not the best at this, but it must be said, as something to just get by, and as something to be able to crucially see in all different lightings, whether you're on stage or whether you're in your room in the dark or whatever, as long as you get the, a bit of lighting onto it, it was actually quite reflective in the right way. You could see the lettering, it didn't just shine in your face. Um, yeah, and that's that's pretty much it for that. It must be said, it took hours and hours and hours to scribe every sodding letter onto there. And the funny thing is, I did actually forget to do some of the lettering on the back. 
One piece of advice is make sure your lettering is simple. If it's all calligraphy related, calligraphy, yeah, it'll it'll take ages. So don't do that. The next job was to sand it. I think I used oh there we go, 800 grit and then 2,000 grit. Sand it down. Go with just go in one direction. You get that nice brushed aluminium look. And once it's nice and smooth, nice and clean, nice and polished, you can put the clear coat on. And it just keeps it looking a lot shinier for a lot longer. Now one of the key things that I will actually mention is the brush that I use for this. came in a set of 20 something assorted brushes. They're from Wilkinson's, which is basically kind of Walmart, it just does everything. Um, and I think the set cost me £4 for 30 brushes. So d don't buy expensive brushes and things, just use one and then when it dies just bin it. Fantastic bristle brush that. And now came the time to remove all of the sticky stuff from the side panels. Now I have no idea what on earth any of this sticky stuff was. It was coating the whole damn keyboard. Now had I actually tried to remove it off the keyboard itself, it would have removed all of the print and all of the black paint. So essentially that's why I coated it in the veneer. However on these side bits I was going to take a lot longer to try and actually coat it in veneer or paint them. So a really really good clean was what I did. I think I started with glass cleaner because it's the only thing that actually shifted the stuff. I think tar remover and tire polish and stuff would actually work quite well for this as well but I ended up using glass cleaner and then car body polish and uh, it actually came up quite nice I, I was pleasantly surprised and this was the bit that oh my god I was looking forward to so much just getting some cool looking screws which I think in this case I used cool little uh, countersunk hex head thingies and screwed the nameplate in place and that essentially was it. A quick polish up and you're probably expecting me to show you the finished thing. Nope. What I'm actually going to do now is say come to the next video and then I'll show you the finished thing. <laughs> As always, stay creative. Focusy, focusy, focusy. You better be focused on me.